behold the power and the might of British Rail, that it can reduce a free man to the level of reading the sun. How low can it go? The sun says, would you let this man near your daughter? This good-looking chap is Mr. Benjamin Obidiah Zephaniah. On Friday, he is expected to become a Cambridge Don. Just what are his qualities which have appealed to Trinity College? He is black. He is a Rastafarian. He has tasted a cruise schools and Boston. And, oh yes, he is a poet. Is this really the kind of man parents would wish to have teaching their sons and daughters? You're him, aren't you, eh? What? Yeah, you're in the mail at all. God, you know, I knew you were famous as soon as I saw you. God. Benjamin Zephano, you're that bloke that took on children's TV, ain't you? I think you should check out where that paper's staying, man. All right, yeah, yeah. I'm not usually a sun reader per se, I. Trinity College, Cambridge, Don. Professor Benjamin Obidaya Zephaniah, you dread Don. I know you. That's me. Well, maybe. I'll find out when I get to Cambridge. That's a proper job, is it? Be nice of you to have a job, I suppose, yeah. Borstals. <laughs> May I apologise for the loud rumbling noises you heard during our poetry reading? I think perhaps it was Keats, Shelley and Byron turning in their graves. I don't think they're gonna give me this job. Mary, this is no game. We have raised a spirit. <gasps> what is this place? Don't you know? <laughs> this is hell or some part of it. And that infernal demon is sent to exact eternal vengeance for a life of black sin. Don't be afraid, Mary. I have a notion that Satan may know my reputation. <laughs> I'm sure you can go to hell if your name is Darby. <laughs> Besides. <laughs> ah! What is it, fish? Galvanic energy. Galvanic energy, Mary. I'll be... Stick your fingers in there and tell me what you think. 
We must go back in there, Percy. We must know this spirit. Good plan, Mary. You first, Percy. Hallowed heaven in art which father are. Hallowed heaven in art which father are. Take me to the Lord of Darkness very quickly, and I will give you a shiny penny. So what's this? Ragweed? Fancy dress party? I tell you what, I'll give you 20p as a contribution to RG magazine. I don't even want a copy. And you just go do your thing somewhere else. Eh? What's this? <laughs> the plan, eh? A sponsored Pratathon? <laughs> Yes, it's all right, junkies. I can see there are two of them out of my way. Do you speak Greek? Yeah, yeah. Gets the fathers. <laughs> Do you think I should strike him? No. I am Lord Byron, an English lord and the finest poet of the age. At your service. This is Percy Shelley, a scribbler of verse. His wife, Mary, a woman, and John Pissabed Keats, a dwarf and an irksome source of misery to us all. Pleased to meet you, and I'm Garfield the Comical Cat, and him over there, that's Annika Rice. Garfield and Annika? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm here to star on my own TV show, and Annika's doing a My Little Pony lookalike competition, actually, Mr. Boyle. Lord Baron. Oh, uh, actually, Lord, you and Annika are in very much the same line of work. He's famous and everything. Look, he's got his picture in the paper, look. Is this English? This is the song. This good-looking chap is Mr. Benjamin Obadiah Zephaniah. I thought you said his name was Annika. He is a poet. He is a poet. He is a poet. He is a poet. <laughs> Mary, junkets, writing things. What's all this, then? Sonnet writing competition. All oh, right, all right. We'll soon see who are the poets around here. I'm not sonnets, Albion. I'm no good at sonnets. Oh, all right, then. Anything you like. Choose your form, theme, and meter. No, thanks. A fat bed. Mary, you keep time. Ready? Well, come on. There's no point unless you play. Well, it's okay. I make mine up in my head. That's what it's for. It's called the rubber dub style. All right. As you wish. Ready? Steady? Go. Christmas grotto, nicking Santa's crackers, till one flew up his trouser leg and paralysed his knackers. <laughs> Villa lost it. Percy, you're next. Well, um, I only had time for... To a skylark. Hail to thee, blithe spirit. Bird, thou never wert. What? What? I don't think you can have words. Can't you? I think you'll find you can in poetry, actually. It's like... over. Anyway, bird thou never word. A skylark is a bird, isn't it? Always was, always will be, always word. You're out, junkets. I'm as brisk as a bottle of whiskey and as nimble as a milliner's thimble. Well done. Poxy. Benjamin, you're next. No, oh, you go first. Ah, but you see, your poem may sound rather wretched coming after mine. No, oh, man, you first. As you wish. Mm. 
She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies, and all that's best of dark and bright meet in the aspect of her eyes. Uh, thus mellowed to that tender light which heaven to gaudy day denies. Bravo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's, uh, it's very easy. It's a party, isn't it? You never just wrote that. Shut up, junkie. I've been in the book years. Shut up, junkie. Shut up, junkie. Ow! Well, Benjamin, what do you think? Sounds just like the stuff they try to make me read in school. And tell me what effect did such poetry have upon your juvenile mind? Make me stop going to school. <laughs> Touché. Your turn, I think. This established guy, ask I, could I write a poem for him? I tell him yes, I play most requests, but enter no contest. Him say I must write directly, in an indirect way. And I must make the reader's imagination, imagine that I try to tell them something within some plot that would make them think and stop, but really I am not. Him say I don't need no rhythm, rhyme or reason, or any of that bad talk them here upon the street. He said the poem must be a proper poem, with proper words and proper spelling. Okay, I say, and I go away. Then I come back and look him in the face and drop two wicked poems on him. The first one roll off my tongue so fast you never hear it, and the second one went, he come in, he come in, dark. Do it, sit and watch the clock. You'll miss the fun, and you need some. He come in, he come in, dark. We rock. Move on. Oh! Yes. You see, Albie, he is a poet. It is, as they say, a game of two halves. But I say, he definitely got the crowd with him. That's enough of them crazy people. I need a nice, quiet corner where I can just cool out. Say, it's just a quick flick there, and it locks tight, fast as anything. There. <sighs> Erasmus Darwin preserved a piece of vermicelli in the glass case, till by some extraordinary means it began to move with voluntary action like a living thing. Could you, spirit, be a king to that vermicelli? <laughs> vermicelli? The Promethean fire. Percy's incantation, my story. Spirit, I believe that we, myself, Percy Albion, perhaps Mr. Keats too, by an extraordinary effort of our will, by the power of our imagination, and perhaps assisted by the galvanic energy of the storm, we have created you. I have created you. Oh, spirit. <laughs> Mary Shelley, Frankenstein. You're big in Birmingham, you know. I haven't read the book, but I've seen all the films. Wicked. How came you to know that name? Frankenstein. These things are my dream spirit. My imaginings. There's been no book printed. You know my mind. Well, then, you know. <laughs> oh. Spirit. May I look? Uh-uh. Yankee screwdriver. Screw. A fastening so artful it confounds imagination. Percy, I've been questioning the spirit. I believe it is of our creation. He 
thinks I'm made of pasta, but that is just a humble rasta. The spirit knows my imaginings. He has recounted to me my dream of the student who gives life to a monster. <laughs> I thought the film was mine. He drinks water. I wonder if we should give him something to eat. Spirit, do you also eat? <laughs> no, it's okay. It can be difficult on trains when you're going to around, so I usually bring some for you. Vegetarian. He is of our minds. It has long been my contention that there is no disease, bodily or mental, which adoption of vegetable diet and pure water has not infallibly mitigated. Debility is gradually... Oh, Percy, take care your nerves. <laughs> Galvanic energy, Mary. Senior Galvan is finding his teachers that it can do our nerves nothing but good. Now you get 40% more cover and no drips. The secret, you say, is in the bristle. Have you read Dante? What? No such torment as this was ever imagined. Ah, now, I know what you're asking. What about radiators? Well, the hey thing... Up. Oh, bloody hell! Yo, come and look at it from where I'm standing, which is on a train in 1987. That's like the year 1987. Now, here the mere you is in some kind of back to the future Doctor Who time travel situation. <laughs> some poets like that kind of thing. But not me. I deal with the here and now. You know what I'm saying? Can you, uh, dig that shit? Percy, may I keep him? Percy, speak to me mercy before I run this poxhead through with his own arrows. Blimey, O'Reilly, what the hell do you think you're playing at? No, no, leave it, leave it. I think we could be in some Back to the Future Doctor Who time travel thing. Just stay cool and pray to Jack. I and I shall be delivered out of the hands of Babylon. But that's British Rail property. What? The spirit is of our creation, Albie. He has supernatural knowledge of our minds and our lives. The spirit is of our making. The mind can make substance and people planets of its own with beings brighter than have been. <laughs> I've just had the most amazing dream. Oh, Lord, it's true. Look, I don't say anything, Mike, but I've got a sneaker suspicion. These people might be on drugs. Oh, Lord, man. Tincture of opium. Oh, it's good. Opium, you don't need that stuff. Look, put it away, will you? For goodness sake, we'll bring drugs through any minute. My slumbers, if I slumber, are not sleep but a continuance of enduring thought, which then I can resist not. I crave forgetfulness of that which is within me. Have you ever tried just having a milky drink at bedtime? You know me? I'm dying. <laughs> oh, hell off. <laughs> this black demon. Oi, don't call him black. It's not nice. He's coloured, right? <laughs> Listen, coloured demon. If you would be a poet of Byronic stature, then let your greatest inspirations be opium, claret, wriggling navels, and the honourable member for Cockshire. Here, put some colour in your eyes. <laughs> I stand for peace, love, pure green, nuclear free. Ha! This man is no poet. Look at him. He isn't even wearing a floppy collar. He does seem to be much abhorred and despised by his fellow man. It has long been my view that the true poet should be an outcast. Tell me, spirit, are you an outcast? Are you mad? Are you bad? Are you dangerous to know? I blew up half the school with gunpowder at Eton, and I was sent down from Oxford for atheism. <laughs> you call that bad? You don't even know what bad is. By the time I was 18, I tapped more women than I can count, broke their hearts, minds, and kidneys without regret or remorse. I've caught the pox twice, attended several black masses, murdered men both in anger and cold blood, got my sister with child. And my sister. Yet, for the poet, none of these things are crime. For the poet, the only crime is to live without genius, without fame, without ambition, and to die having lived your life within the strict ceremonies of... Horse turds! <laughs> it's easy to pose as a sinner when in possession of a personal fortune, Albie, to play the seditionist. But when you're poor John Keats from the Swan and Hoop, apprentice apothecary, then your only crime is to publish poems... Well, you see what it is to be under six foot and not a lord. The vile companies of the Tory press. A cockney poet, they called me. 
Mr. Keats is a boy of poetic abilities, in which he does everything within his power to spoil. <laughs> the Tory press, yes, he's black. He's a Rastafarian. He has tasted of proof schools and ball stools. Is this really the type of man parents would wish to have teaching their sons and daughters? <laughs> Envy and calumny touch me not. Yet when the Tories in Chancery try to deprive you of your children and inheritance, to throw you into prison, to expose you in the pillory on the grounds of being a revolutionist and an atheist uh, and... Hmm? Oh, uh, sorry. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Stand back, <laughs> Look it up! All right, that's it, that's it! Game's over, game's over! Right, see about that then, won't we? I mean, it's wonderful, you despotism and bloodshed and injustice. A tyrannical Tory government heedless to the cries of the poor. And we are condemned as seditionists and atheists. Because of your poems! And the company in notes. Poems about bloody daffodils! That, that was, was words word. word. We read the poetry of raw, naked, thrusting truth. Yeah. Men of England, wherefore plough for the Lord to lay ye low? Wherefore weave with toil and care the rich robes your tyrants wear? Did you write that? Yes, wicked lyric guy. Yeah. Wherefore feed and clothe and save from the cradle to the grave? Bowls and grateful drones who would drain your sweat, may drink your blood. Have you leisure, comfort, calm, shelter, food, love's gentle balm? Or what is it that you buy so dear with your pain and with your fear? See ye so, another reaps, the wealth ye find, another keeps, the clothes ye weave, another wears, the arms ye forge, another bears. How come you can know my pen? I saw Michael Smith do it on BBC too. Sow so seeds, but let, let no tyrant reap. Find wealth, let no imposter heap. Weave robes, let not the idle wear. Forge arms in our defense to bear. What we write, it makes men's minds, their souls. Long time ago, before the book existed, poetry was oral and not plain mystic. Poetry was something that people understood. Poetry was living in every neighborhood. Storytelling was compelling listening and entertaining. Done without the ego trips and no special training. Found in many forms, this was the aura to the shan. When government said quiet, poets said no submission. No, some write it, some chant it, some money people back it, some rant it, some chat it, some do it regimatic, some wrap it up and rant it out. Just people do jazz poetry, no matter how you check it. All of it is poetry. I have no hangout for the black chat farm. This is so important, it must break the norm. I have no hangout for its style or rhyme. And if a feeling has no word, I make one of mine. I think it is important to tell this to the people. Poetry was stolen from us, and that was evil. Put up on the bookshelf by the type that like to analyze. Disgusting classy journals by the type with reading eyes. Look, there's nothing wrong with reading. We must read to liberation, but readers must not put down this long aura to the shan. No, there's nothing wrong with reading. Just think people die to read, but there's plenty wrong with hiding something that people may need. Some have taken up the gun, some have taken up the pen. Oppressors are aware of this and they fear both of them. Lawmakers and media try holding rappers back. And it is no coincidence that most rappers are black. Oh. What do you call that meter? Can I just get a word in here, please? Hey? Listen, is it... I admit that uh, we were supposed to, you know, read poetry and that at school, and uh, I bought up. Well, I'll tell you frankly, I'm pretty glad I did now. I mean, I don't give a toss about whether it's proper poetry in a book or whether it's that bloody you know, stuff that you do. I mean, it's all a lot of... I mean, you come in here. I mean... Who shagged his sister? And who's blown off the bloody train up? I mean, and if that's not bad, I mean, then you start slagging off the Tories. I mean, I mean, it's not that bad, you know. Look at me. I've got a Barrett executive home. I've got a Schreiber kitchen. Nat circle firm oven. I've got a day rich cotton and two litre GLI. I mean, I've got a mortgage up to here and plastic and all that, but I don't need any me grassy. There you are. No, no, no. I mean, who the bloody hell do you think you are, eh? You tell me. One thing you have ever done for this country. Come on, tell me one. Hey, you tell me, what have you ever bloody privatised, eh? Who the bloody hell do you think you are? Me 
Mr. Lord. Hi, Mr. Lord. He Mr. Biden. Hi, Lord. Hey. Right, that's it. Give me his kizzard. Oh, 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 Violent, pacify yourself, man. No more killing, Alvy. I'll cut out his heart and eat it still beating. Alvy! Oh, all right, I'll just flog him then. <laughs> What, what, what the bloody are you doing? I've got a first-class ticket to that. Leave him. I thought you were defenders of the oppressed. <laughs> He's not oppressed. I bloody am now. He's just a misguided proletariat, the oh, same no. as me. Oh, oh, a victim of the oppressor. Oh, oh, what oppressor? Oh, no, no, there's a, there's the same one you had in 1820. Him? In 1987. <laughs> Surely all oppression must have been vanquished. Our, our, our work. The Tories can't still be in power. <laughs> Oh, that's next for me when I have about 99. Then we have failed. History has silenced our voice. You'll suffer for this. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, no. Look, um, look, look, um, look I've got a gold Amex in there. Go on, take it, take it, take it. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll read some bloody poems. No, Albie. Percy, we haven't failed. Can you not see our imagination? Our understanding, our poetry, our passion. We created the spirit. Mary. We can make another spirit. Hundreds of spirits. Hundreds of vegetarian, seditionist poets. With, with beautiful liquid eyes and long, lean limbs. You're a genius, Mary. Galvanism, the Promethean fire. The mind can make substance and people planets of its own. You're all ruddy mental. I'll be. Help us. I'll be back. No, oh, thou spirit fierce, my spirit. Be thou me, impetuous one. Drive my dead thoughts over the universe like withered leaves to quicken a new birth. And by the incantation of this verse, scatter as from an unextinguished heart, ashes and sparks, my words among mankind. These eyes and awaken the trumpet of a prophecy. life in there, mate. Cambridge, this is Cambridge. This train terminates here. Okay. Couldn't have me a, a big favour, could you, and just uh, stick your autograph on there for us? No oh, problem. Right. right, sorry. Fat pen. <laughs> Oh, great. Lovely. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Look, um, good luck with the, with the job and that and things, you know. Yeah, thanks. Oh. <laughs> Peace and love. Yeah. Cheers. All the best. 